Alabama's WVUA News at 6 with your award-winning news team, Lynn Brooks, Philip Coleman, weather with Richard Scott, and sports with Gary Harris. We are glad you're with us tonight. I'm Lynn Brooks. Philip Coleman has this evening off. Topping your news tonight, it's been more than 17 months since the April 27th tornado and some homes damaged in the storm are still standing. That's raising some concerns with county leaders as well as some homeowners. WVUA's Jennifer Edwards has details in tonight's top story. For Evelyn Gardner, 3828 Willow Lane was more than just a home. They bought it in 1970 and I was what, 13? And when they both passed on, they left it to me. I'm the youngest of 10 and it was mine and I told them that I would never sell it. Not only was the home where she grew up, but in 2006, her son Brannon had a new vision for it. I just drew up a house and she had the faith enough to be able to, to listen to what I had to say and step out on it and, and try to actually build something, you know, that I, I, I envisioned. We did every nail, every two by four, two by six, whatever, our own self. Had the columns put on, the, all the roof, all the shingles and all the bricks. And it was just about com to complete it when the tornado just came. After 17 months, the county is asking the gardeners and other homeowners to clean up their property. We've given them 120 days to take care of them themselves if they can, and if they can't, we'll come in and demolish the property and clean it up. These are the people that just don't have the means to do that, um, or in a lot of cases, are people that have just left the area. I couldn't tear it down at first when they had all the free services around and it just kind of left me in a hard spot. Despite the devastation, the gardeners are calling the storm a blessing in disguise. With the economy and the whole process, we were just at this medium right here and we just couldn't go any farther. I had insurance and the Lord just, you know, just moved it out of the way so we could get past all of this. The county has given the gardeners a 30-day extension to remove the house. Reporting in Tuscaloosa County, Jennifer Edwards, WVUA News. According to Spence, the county attorney, all homes that were destroyed in the storm should be cleaned up in the next three to four months. Tuscaloosa County employees will soon see a pay increase. Also, funding for agencies by the county will also see an increase. The boost is the result of the Tuscaloosa County Commission approving the 2013 fiscal year budget. Commissioners say the spike in funding stems from a 2% increase over last year's budget. County employees will get a 3% pay raise and agencies like the Tuscaloosa Public Library, Tuscaloosa County Parks and Recreation Authority, and Focus on Senior Citizens will all get a 10% funding increase. Chief Financial Officer Bill Lamb says this hasn't happened in a while. It's a significant increase and they haven't been, the last few years have been pretty uh, flat level funding and this is a significant increase in, in agency funding. According to Lamb, the 2% total budget increase stems from sales and property tax being up. The increase in pay and funding went into effect October 1st. Tuscaloosa County Sports and Recreation Authority and the Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports Commission are teaming up to try to create some better local sports facilities. Para's Executive Director Gary Miner says the two agencies have created a five-year plan. They're calling for building new fields and facilities or refurbishing existing ones in places like Sokol Park, Bowers, also Evans Rochelle Park. Miner says the updates would give kids in Tuscaloosa more opportunities. The Tourism and Sports Commission says it will also be a way to bring people into Tuscaloosa. For us, we feel like because we're the city of champions, people will want to bring their events here if we have the facilities. We're kind of locked on the, what we can do with our kids and what we can offer them in Tuscaloosa right now because we're, we have a lack of fields. Para and the Sports Commission are currently working on funding to get those projects started. Well, sad news today from the University of Alabama. A professor has died. Assistant Professor Will Nolan died last Thursday. According to Franklin County, Tennessee Sheriff's Office, the 39-year-old died due to accidental drowning from electrocution. Chief Perry says Nolan told his family he wanted to go for a quick swim, but never returned. 
search team started to look for him, but they found they felt an electrical shock from the ladder on the dock. Crews then discovered Nolan's body under the dock. Police say the home had apparently been hit by lightning a few weeks earlier, and that could have caused the electrical problem at the dock. Assistant Vice President of University Relations Deborah Lane said Nolan was an outstanding faculty member and had tremendous potential for the future. He is survived by his wife and an infant son. New developments in downtown Tuscaloosa have some residents wondering where they will park when the new structures are complete. The parking lot at the corner of Greensboro and University Boulevard is a prime place for drivers to park. It's also the site of a new downtown hotel. Tuscaloosa Department of Transportation Director Tara Tubbs says city leaders are working on a solution for commuters and they have plans to build two new parking lots near downtown. And with the downtown revitalization that the city's been working on for the last several years, it's been very successful and we're starting to see a lot more businesses and restaurants open up downtown. We've built the intermodal facility, which is a parking deck that provides 449 free parking places to the downtown patrons. So what we're really doing is trying to encourage the employees of these businesses downtown to utilize that area and then allow the on-street parking in front of the businesses for the patrons that are frequenting downtown. TDOT is currently working on more parking spaces and hopes to have the free parking available early next year. An Alabama football player received a major honor today, and it's for his good deeds off the field that are, bringing every, that are grabbing everyone's attention. Offensive lineman Barrett Jones is well known for his work off the field, including tornado relief, hospital visits, and also two mission trips to Haiti. Today, Allstate's Good Works team surprised him with an award which highlights players who are committed to making a difference in their communities. Jones was scheduled to speak at Crossing Points this morning about working skills, and that's when former Alabama quarterback Jay Barker walked in and presented him with this very prestigious honor. It was pretty cool to, to see their faces light up when, when they sang me the fight song and showed me their sign. So, uh, you know, I was happy because of how happy they were and how happy they seemed uh, to have me there. He knows that he's playing for more than just himself. He's playing for a lot of the things that he can really have a platform in and, and helping people out, whether it's through you know, aiding the tornado victims or, or going on mission trips or just being a part of this Good Works team. Um, you know, we know that Barrett sees the value in impacting and, and really investing in other people's lives. And don't you just love good, positive news like this? It makes you feel good. And Jones is only one of 11 football players to be honored with this award. Good for him.